You're such an asshole. Ho, ho, ho. Cappy Claws here. It is December. No, it's not December. It's November 30th, but it might as well be December. I'm going to declare December the official go and buy all your Christmas shopping gifts through Cappy's Amazon affiliate program. So you go to CappyCapitalism.blogspot.com. You look for the Amazon banner. It'll be to the right. You click on it. You buy all your shopping. It doesn't cost you anything more. I'd like to put the link down directly below, but I can't because Amazon has these rules and they're really weird and nebulous about it. Anyway, some guy writes, Dear Campy, keep me anonymous. Please tell me how much I owe you. I'm a 33-year-old bachelor living in central Minnesota. I took two semesters of college and majored in computer programming. One programming class, Python, was 100% pass. Algebra kicked my ass due to getting sick during that time. I also have a diploma in computer repair and am familiar with HTML coding and con content management systems development. I own the following assets, a $28,000 house with, 8, 000, with an $8,000 mortgage, two sports cars with no loans, a $6,000 a Roth IRA, $12,000 a 401k, and $4,500 in checking. <laughs> right now, I work as a manager at a place bringing home $31,000 including vacation payout. Quarterly bonus overtime potential and income tax refund, it is closer to 40000 In the last two years, I high rolled with 10000 in savings in the stock market. I lost 600 on a dumb maneuver and walked away with about 1400 in profit. My father is worth 500000 leaving it to me and my sister. I am the will executor. I'm needless to say doing well for myself and kicking ass. It has not always been like this. <laughs> Up until recently, I spent my money foolishly when I was dirt poor and would fret about what amount what I would amount to in the eyes of society. Well, that's your first mistake lot right there. Fuck society. Fuck what people think. Go do your thing. I was also a loser with no car, no girlfriend. My questions, how do I let go of the past? Part of my foundation is built on it, on this, and it is part of my drive to succeed. All right, let's talk about how you let go of your past. You let go of your past. It never really leaves you because that's who you are. Like, I have... Uh, I'll never get rid of my hatred and rage, uh, but I channel that towards productive means and goals. Uh, I would not have asshole consulting or be anywhere where I am today if it were not for my hatred and rage and, and vengeance and, and, and you know because it gives you a, a, an unlimited energy. Uh, and you can't get rid of your past. You can let go of it, but you're never going to get rid of it. Um, so I don't I don't know. I mean, if you want to like still one-up people who, who give they see I, that's what i don't get is like what do you give a shit what society thinks no one cares anymore now you're in a small town in central minnesota so you're probably still running into your high school buddies all right you should get the fuck out of that small town uh minnesota unless you like staying there and if that's the case then then you're just gonna have to admit you're gonna be reminded of your past all the time because you've lived there your entire life you see the same people you graduate from high school with but you gotta ignore them like go read books go travel go do something in other words, that's the town you live uh, and you rest your head and you make your money and then you travel out west or you go fly around or you go do something else or you work on cars. Uh, you get into your own little world either whether it's there and you're, you're in your own world working on mechanics or some kind of hobby or you're flying out, traveling, and you're not actually physically there. But how do you let go of your past? Uh, yeah, you just don't let... Don't... There is... Let me give you an example. Your next question is, is the juice worth the squeeze of college? Here's here's another question that's applied to it. Is the juice worth the squeeze to try to prove to people in the past that you're doing it, that you're killing it? I look at people back in high school, in college. It's not worth my time and energy. Hey, look what I... Nah, nah, nah. It doesn't matter. It's the point... That nothing's going to change. I'm wasting my time. My time is better spent going and further pursuing excellence, further doing what I want to do, make more money, pay off debts, whatever it is, uh, pursue my hobbies, go hike, go, go ride a motorcycle, rather than worry about what happened 20, 25, 30 years ago with a bunch of inferior normie conformy fucks. Right? And if vengeance is part of it, which it could be, um, don't worry, they'll fuck up, don't worry. Central Minnesota, don't worry. I'm sure they're all pregnant at the age of 15, and now at your age, they're probably already got grandchildren on the way. Uh, but yeah, man, you just you just let go. And you go live. You, the, another way to put it, heard this from the Hanging Chads podcast. Um, they interviewed a guy and he said, there is no past. You can't go to the past. It's not a place you can visit. 
It's not tangible. You cannot go to the past. All you have is the future. That's the only place you could go to. So every bit of energy and time you waste worrying about the past is taken away from the only thing you have, and that is the future. So I guess that's, that's a better way to look at it, is you're just wasting your time worrying about the past. Is the juice worth the squeeze for college? Is the conflict to schedule with my current position? Is the rat race worth chasing over my current lifestyle? No, the rat race is not. But you would not be pursuing the rat. Rat race is commute, working at a cube, working for some cocksucker downtown Minneapolis or St. Paul or any downtown place. Um, you don't have that. Um, but the field that you're going into, computer programming, uh, I'd say it's worth it. I don't even know if you got to go to college. Again, you have your options of boot camp. You can educate, self-educate. You can go online. You self-certify. Um, take your tests. Build up a programming portfolio. You don't need to go to college. Um, but what? You got to have a like a community college out there. <laughs> Yourself maybe a an associates at nighttime. It is a conflict with the the rat. Was, you know, my bills amount to five thousand per year. I feel they would be more substantial if I moved the city and get a job in my major. Well, yeah, but they're going to pay you more. And if you're a programmer, you may not even have to go work in the city. That shit can be done. You notice how they can't wait to hire enough Indi East Indians? You don't think they're going to pay them to come over here and pay lodging and rent for them? Hell no! They want Punjab over in Bangladesh living in his, his, his uh, uh, fecal hut with a thatch roof, uh, but internet connection. He want, they want them banging out code for five cents a day. So um, you could you could in theory stay in central Minnesota, program, get some kind of job online, do some contract work. Uh, but I wouldn't, yeah, if you don't want to move to a major city, you don't have to. They got programming jobs other places. If a young woman, 18 to 25, age bracket is flirting with me at work seemingly, read deliberately appearing in my location and showing indications of interest, dilated pupils playing with hair. Oh, dude, what fucking pickup artist bullshit did you read? It's not a science. It's not a science. Girls will let you know. But she pulls back or ignores me when I make a move. What gives? Are they worth it? She's just attention whoring. She just wants attention. I wouldn't do that at work. Are they worth chasing? No. No, not at work. You do not shit where you eat. A woman worth chasing at all. The one time I waved my hands at a group of ladies having a picnic in a public location, they blurted out something about sexual harassment. I have shied away ever since. Yeah, that's the modern-day warfare. That's, that's the battlefield right now. After testing Badoo and Tinder, both a waste of time. And well, how many people are on, on the websites out there in central Minnesota? And combined with my own negative experiences, I have concluded women of this generation are shallow. Generally, yes. I'm not looking for anything serious. Not not at that age, no. However, I feel MGTOW is stupid. Yeah, no, it, it's... <sighs> To answer your question bluntly, are women worth chasing at all? No. And it sounds to me when you're like, hey, I, I did this thing, and I, I did X, Y, and Z, so it should result in A, B, C. It tells me you have no experience with women, or very little. Um, you need to start dating more, not at work. Uh, I would go to the next town over, go ask girls out at the bar or the roller rink or whatever the fuck is over there. I don't know. Whatever the social activity is. Um, and, and practice over there. Do not shit where you eat. Okay, go to the next town over, two towns over. Um, but yeah, you, you at the same time when you're inexperienced and and you don't and you need to get experience. Yes, this is by far the worst. I thought Gen X was bad. I'm sure my old man thought the baby boomers were bad, but I cannot believe the millennials. I mean, holy shit, they're the the women are full blown cycle. Um. Yeah, asking, you know, you're saying hi to girls and they blurt out about sexual harassment. Yeah, and that's how they've been raised and, and programmed. And they're they're not raised or programmed to think, well, I'd like to have kids. Well, I can still have kids, so I better get married around 25, you know, 26. Um, they're all about careerism and you go, girl. And, and the media reinforces this and politics and the schools reinforce it. So it, it's, um, I don't want to necessarily say dangerous. It's dangerous when you're flirting with girls at work, yeah. Um, but... Uh, you still got to get some kind of experience, especially since you're not MGTOW. And that changes once you hit about 30, 35. But I can't say for this generation. Uh, and in, in my case, in the Gen Xers case, it didn't change all that much for the better. I do know that after 30, I never saw a girl throw a temper tantrum. Um, they uh, stop standing you up. They, the flake rate goes down. But right now, given the immaturity 
the psycho level, the mental illness, and the general degraded mental health and the entitlement that young and that 18 to 25 age bracket, not to mention that they're best looking then, I, I would, dude, focus on your programming. Focus on your programming. I wouldn't even bother. Um, and you don't have that much. It's, see, I, I want you to go and practice, but not even necessarily with the expectation to get a date, just so you get used to getting shot down and you're approaching women and you can read a situation where like, oh, they're, they're saying, and what you did correctly there, you said, hey, babies, what's up? And they say, we're going to get sexual harassment. Like, oh, see you later, sugar darlings, or should I say vinegar darlings? Oh, oh, oh out of here. Um, yeah, your approach probably is horrible. Uh, but that's why you need practice. But I would not put women number one at, at, at your life. That That is like, you got nothing else to do on a Saturday night. Go to the next town over. Go to the bowling alley. Talk to a girl. Say, hey, you want to go bowling sometime? Oh, yeah. So are they worth chasing and all? Yeah, just uh, I'd say maybe seventh or eighth on your priority list. Um, you know, get some experience. You know, if the opportunity presents itself, but I wouldn't chase them. No, I'd, I'd put your time and effort into learning programming or just work harder. It, See, you, you're going to get a you're going to get a guaranteed rate of return putting an extra hour in at work. You're going to get money. You're going to get not necessarily a guaranteed rate of return, but a very good probable rate of return if you put your time into programming and learning programming languages. You, the the inefficiency of chasing girls is is oh it's horrible. If you if you don't have game or you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be below five percent in terms of like energy waste. Um, going forward, what should my goals as an older male be? How do I concentrate on my own goals while ignoring the dumb fucks and other douchebags of society? Well, you're in Hickville. Um, so there, you, it's gonna, you just ignore them, I guess, you know, like, how do I let go of my past? Well, you let go of your past. How do I ignore the dumb fucks and douchebags of society? Well, you ignore them. Uh, given where you work, it's gonna be hard. But, you know, don't go to Buffalo Wild Wings when the game's on. Focus on programming. Maybe go teach yourself auto mechanics. Um, take in some old classical movies. Go to another town. Get some kind of hobby, outdoor. Go fishing, something. You know, uh, that that's what I would do to ignore the dumb fucks. And what should your goals as an older male be? Well, you st pay off your debts. Um, stay in physical shape. Develop intellectually rewarding and stimulating hobbies. Uh, what else? Find out what your goals should be in life. That's a key one right there. If you've got issues or questions about that, go read Reconnaissance Man. Uh, but it should be improving yourself and achieving excellence as in, in fields that you want to achieve excellence in. Now, there are some standard ones. You should be employed, you should be making some money, and you should be in good physical shape. shape. That's kind of all for all of us. But then beyond that, it's, it's up to whatever you want to do. Like, maybe you like woodworking. Maybe you want to become a great fisherman. Maybe you want to become a great bowler. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. And a lot of that, like I said before, is spending the time to try and figure out what it is you want to do. Again, never thought in a million years I'd be a ballroom dancer. Never thought in a million years I'd be an author. Well, you know, that's how it goes. So try different things. And that, that right there is probably even half of it is just experimenting and finding out uh, what you do. But beyond, you know, working out, eating healthy, having a career, getting out of debt, those, those are three noble things right there. The rest of it is what you want to do, but make sure it focuses in on you. Self-improvement should be your main thing. Girls inevitably will follow, or it will at least put you in a much better position when you have achieved excellence in various fields. Uh, then you're not going to a girl with a blank sheet of paper. You have, look at my accomplice, you got a nice resume. Uh, but, you know, and maybe chase the occasional girl here or there if she presents herself, but not at work, and do not waste too much time on it. Um, and that's, that's why. Will Social Security be viable in the future? Uh, this is why I charge so much. Um... It depends on whether the United States dollar remains the world's reserve currency. I'm thinking for my generation it will be. Um, and the reason why is we basically just print off the, our money. We print off the money that um, we spend more than we make, and now we're just printing off the money at the federal level to finance our deficit. And the Federal Reserve uh, buys those bonds, gives the government the money, and we got the money. Uh, as long as there is demand, though, in in the globe, foreign demand for U.S. dollar denominated assets and just U.S. dollars, the, we won't in, we won't suffer the inflation with all those. We tripled the money supply, by the way. No one knew that under Obama, but oh, numbers. Um, 
And a lot of that was disseminated overseas during the financial crisis because people want to hold on to dollars, even though we caused it, which is... Because foreigners seem to be pretty fucking stupid. Anyway, so all these idiot foreigners bought all the dollar-denominated assets, took dollars as, as a flight to safety, because actually most of the rest of the world is more corrupt and not as productive as the United States. We're still the biggest game in town, and we're relatively uncorrupt. So our currency, no matter how much we print off, like, say, triple the amount, everybody buys it because they're in even worse shape. So this means that the dollars that we print off that will go to pay Social Security will still have value because they're overseas, sitting in accounts. Everyone's holding on to it because they're scared. No one wants to invest, so it never gets circulated into the economy. So inflation stays low. As long as you heat that game up, fine. The day an alternative world reserve currency comes up, China becomes less corrupt, Russia becomes less corrupt and more productive, I, I just don't see it. Um, then, then there will be issues. Uh, but right now... I think, at least my generation, I think not only will we receive a social security check, it won't be hyperinflated away. So you can thank other people's greed, laziness, sloth, and corruption overseas for doing that and giving the U.S. dollar value. Might be an outside chance Bitcoin or some cryptocurrency. I don't want to say necessarily Bitcoin. That might even debunk the United States as the world's reserve currency, but that's way down the road, and I don't think that's going to happen. Plus, it's insanely difficult to use. All right, that's it. You guys got questions? The old captain has answers. Assholeconsulting.com. Oh, uh, Christmas shopping. My Amazon affiliate plan. CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com. Look to the right. See the Amazon banner. Don't say I don't see the banner. And I say, did you look to things? Oh, there it is. It's there. Go buy. Make me happy. Merry Christmas. Toodles.